Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and today we're taking a look at the brand new Access Point Wi-Fi 6 extender for Unify Network. Now that name is a mouthful, and it's one of the many changes between the older version Beacon HD and the newer version Access Point Wi-Fi 6 extender. Now I will give my thoughts on these types of changes a little bit later in the video, but if you guys enjoyed this type of content, make sure you give me a thumbs up and subscribe to Crosstalk Solutions for two to three brand new tech videos every single week. And if you're looking to purchase any of these products, make sure you use our link down below. That's an affiliate link. It doesn't change your price at all, but it does get us a couple bucks for the referral. And it is hands down the best way you can support Crosstalk Solutions so that we can continue making videos just like this one. All right, let's dig into this Access Point Wi-Fi 6 extender. All right, see if it'll do the box slide here. All right, there we go. Now, absolutely beautiful. The form factor of the Wi-Fi 6 extender is almost identical to the form factor of the Beacon HD. In fact, they might be exactly the same. I have not looked at them super closely, but I'll put some side-by-side uh, -side shots here so you can see close up. One thing that I do know has changed between the older Beacon HD and the new Wi-Fi 6 extender is that the light that goes around the device, you used to be able to change the color of the LED to basically any color, and now the new ones can only do blue and white. I think this is due to sort of chip shortages, global chip shortages and supply chain issues. Uh, they just can't get their hands on these sort of color changing LEDs that they used to have on some of the older equipment. Also in the box, we have the quick start guide. We have a uh, sort of a blank uh, face plate in case you need to put a face plate on your electrical outlet. Uh, and then we have a little sticky pad here, and this must be maybe so that you can put this here so it doesn't scratch your wall or something. I'm not really sure what this is for. Maybe it says that in the quick start guide. Let me take a look. Okay, yes, so it is not just a single sticky pad that goes on the back here. It's actually four different dots, and uh, you can pull off these dots individually and sort of put them on the back four corners of the Wi-Fi 6 extender in order to cushion it a little bit more uh, off of the wall as opposed to the ones that come on here by default. Okay, so next step is to go ahead and get this thing plugged in and fired up and then we're going to adopt it into Unify. Okay, powering on now. We can see that there is a white LED around the sides of the Wi-Fi 6 extender. And uh, once this turns solid white, that means that it should be available for adoption into Unify. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the Unify app ready to rock and roll. Okay, so make sure you have Bluetooth enabled on your smart device. And here we can see in the Unify app, it says new device found access point Wi-Fi 6 extender. We are gonna go ahead and click set up. It's asking for a name. I'm just gonna leave it default and say next. And it is now adopting the device. So easy as that, we are up and running with the access point Wi-Fi 6 extender. So as this device is adopting, let's talk a little bit more about the specifications. This is a Wi-Fi 6 access point, meaning that it does have the ability, oh, just turned blue, which means it's successfully adopted. Uh, but this has up to 4.8 gigabits of total throughput in the five gigahertz band and up to like 573 megabits per second in the 2.4 gigahertz band. However, keep in mind that those numbers are a little bit misleading. First of all, wireless isn't full duplex. So you're not, you're never gonna be able to get like almost five gigabits worth of throughput in any one direction. Second of all, this device only has one five gigahertz radio and one 2.4 gigahertz radio. So it's a mesh uplink device, right? There's no wire, there's no ethernet cable that plugs into this device to give you network connectivity. It pulls its network connectivity from other access points. Oh, device adopted, all finished. Let's go to the dashboard real quick and take a look at it. Oh, there we say it says getting ready. Okay, so minimum version of Unify needed to run this device is 6.5.55. Minimum access point firmware that can uplink to this device is 6.0.11. Uh, so check out the product page for this product. You can see all of those various versions. But going back to the wireless uplink capabilities, since there is only a single five gigahertz radio in here, that's the same radio that not only 
gives wireless access to your clients, but also manages and maintains that uplink to the other devices that this is connected to. So if you have a different access point, you know, a U6 Lite or a U6 Pro somewhere else in your home or business, that device has a, an uplink to this device, which then also fans out to clients. So even though it says 4.8 gigabits of total throughput, you're basically already cut in half based on the fact that it's using the same radio for the uplink as well as for the clients. There's not a separate dedicated radio inside this device for the uplink. That being said, in most cases, that's totally fine. You're not gonna be maxing out a device like this. Now, me personally, I use this device or use the Beacon HD uh, down in a corner of my house where I don't have any sort of ethernet connectivity. It's kind of near the front area of my house. And mostly it's for my G4 doorbell to uplink and then you know connect into Unify Protect. But other devices that are down there such as smartphones or tablets or whatever also may hop onto this connection. If you are going to be running devices that have serious bandwidth needs, this is probably not the device you wanna use. You wanna to try to get a wire over there somehow and plug in an actual access point. This is mostly just for sort of non-essential supplementary Wi-Fi uh, in areas that don't have the best coverage. But like, I wouldn't rely on this to run, you know, 20 people in an office off of just this device, only connected to a single other access point. Okay, so I've talked about it enough. Let's go ahead and plug this device in downstairs where it's going to live, and then we will take a closer look at it uh, in Unify Network on my PC. Installation of this device could not be easier. You can see that all there is is a single plug on the back. This is the US version, but there is, of course, also a, an EU version with a different uh, form factor plug as well. Uh, other than that, we have a factory reset hole on the bottom, and all we have to do is simply plug it in. While this is booting up, I should mention that if you guys are interested in a full comparison chart of all of the Wi-Fi 6 access points, there is a link down in the description below where I've put all of that information into one handy chart, and I just updated it for the Wi-Fi 6 extender. Once the LED turns blue, we know that it is successfully adopted and connected to Unify. Here's what the access point Wi-Fi 6 extender looks like in Unify. And the first thing that you're gonna notice is that its icon does not actually look like the form factor of the access point. Uh, hopefully they get that fixed at some point. You can see the older Beacon HD looks like the Beacon HD, but the access point Wi-Fi 6 extender uh, just looks like a regular uh, access point. First things first, for this access point Wi-Fi 6 extender, it looks like I have an upgrade available, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that updated right now. And in the meantime, I'm gonna click on my Beacon HD, and since I'm not gonna be using it anymore, I'm going to unadopt it from Unify so that I can use it somewhere else. Okay, so we're clicking on settings and then manage, and we are just going to forget the Beacon HD, and uh, it should factory reset the device. Beacon HD has been removed and the Wi-Fi 6 extender has been updated to the latest version of firmware. Let's take a look at this device. Here we can see some general information about the access point. If we click on config, oh, this is interesting. Now it still has the old school color changing mechanism, even though there is a note that says it can only do blue and white LEDs. So I don't think changing these colors actually does anything on this device. It's interesting that they still have this uh, still have this in here. And then we have settings for radios, in which case I'm just basically leaving everything default, uh, band steering off or prefer 5G. Again, I'm just gonna leave that uh, off as default and then some other various network and DHCP settings. Now, if I click on clients and I sort by access point slash port, we can see that a ton of clients have already connected to this device, including actually some stuff that is up here in this office. So it's interesting that uh, it's not connecting to my main access point, which is upstairs in the attic. It's actually connecting to that Wi-Fi 6 extender all the way downstairs. Interesting. All right, so other than that, I expect that this Wi-Fi 6 extender will behave basically exactly the same way that the Beacon HD I had in that same spot behaved previously. And uh, I'm looking forward to checking out the Wi-Fi 6 experience, although I imagine that I probably won't even be able to notice any sort of discernible difference between these two access points. I just don't have the client density uh, to 
that would actually make a difference with Wi-Fi 6 versus the Beacon HD. One thing that I noticed when I went to grab the Wi-Fi 6 extender to take the thumbnail picture is that it is significantly hotter to the touch than the Beacon HD. Let's take a look at this here. We can see about 138 degrees Fahrenheit on the Wi-Fi 6 extender and about 108 degrees Fahrenheit on the Beacon HD. So about a 30 degree difference in temperature between these two devices. Something to think about if you have kids, uh, it might be a little bit too hot to the touch uh, for something that's plugged in into a wall outlet uh, within reach of children. So a few thoughts on the Access Point Wi-Fi 6 extender. Uh, first of all, the name, right? So the name has changed. It used to be called the Beacon HD. Now it is called the Access Point Wi-Fi 6 extender, which is really a mouthful, but in marketing terms, it actually explains what the device is better than Beacon HD. Beacon HD doesn't mean anything, right? It's a cool name, but it doesn't actually mean anything. Uh, access Point Wi-Fi 6 extender, you kind of get that it's an access point extender just by the name even though the name is terrible compared to Beacon HD. I personally prefer the name Beacon HD, but I do understand why Ubiquity would make that distinction, uh, given that it's now much more obvious what the device actually does. So no difference in form factor whatsoever. The only other sort of major difference besides being Wi-Fi 6 instead of Wi-Fi 5 is that LED ring around the side is only blue and white. Again, likely due to global chip shortages and just availability of components. Uh, I've seen a number of the newer access points limit the LED color to just the blue and white, and I'm sure that's the reason. So if you are looking to purchase one of these devices and the color of the ring, the color of the LED around the device is important to you, then you should go for the Beacon HD, the previous version. Uh, again, Wi-Fi 5 versus Wi-Fi 6, but unless you have a huge amount of client density, which likely you wouldn't want to put through this device anyways, um, you're probably not going to notice any actual performance differences between the two. And it'll save you 20 bucks. Uh, Beacon HD is 129 versus the Wi-Fi 6 extender is 149. Finally, I will say that so many people complain in every single Unify video that I put out about the availability of these products. If you are looking to get one of these products, make sure you check out uinotified.net for all of your product in stock notification needs. You can get a text message that says, hey, the Wi-Fi 6 extender just came in stock and then you can immediately go buy one. That's how I got mine. Or you can sit back and not use UI Notify and just complain down in the comments below. I always look forward to seeing those. Okay, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. My name is Chris with Crosstalk Solutions, and thank you so much for watching.